Latasha, what is your recommendation? My recommendation this week is for everyone to dump their boyfriend. Here's why I say that. And I'm, I know boyfriends usually means for the boy, but let's use this as a very genderless spectrum. Um, if you are romantically or emotionally or sexually involved in someone who doesn't make you feel like a goddamn god, mm. get them the fuck out of here. They make you feel insecure. They make you feel crazy with questioning some bullshit that they're actually out here doing. If they don't compliment you and you know you got dressed up, put on some dope makeup, put on a dope fit, went to go see this person, and the first thing that didn't come out their mouth is, wow, you look great. Or they're just like, why'd you put that on? Or what's all this about? Or like, you ready to go? Or you show up all dressed up trying to look nice for somebody and they came up and showing up looking like shit. That means they feel like you're shit. And you ain't shit. Because you're the shit. So <laughs> get them out of there they say some nagging stuff and you finally feel good about something or you finally get some good news in your life and they neg it or they try to play you or they like don't be so happy about that or like they don't help you feel as good or they look jealous or they make you feel like you're suffocating when you just want to go hang out with your friends mm-hmm. they're trying to check your phone check where you're going to be who's that what's, what you're doing it's probably projection because they do, they're doing something wrong or like you're just making yourself add stress just to have access to this person to that D. Does it? Dump him, sis. <laughs> Dump him. They gave us two north. Hey everyone, it's Jess Latasha, and I hope you guys saw that mini clip at the beginning of this video. Yes, I have a new podcast. It's a comedy podcast alongside my friend and co-worker, Miss Amanda Berry. Uh, we have such a good time on that podcast. Please subscribe. It's called Fuck It. It's a podcast. We made it super hard for advertising dollars. We didn't, we didn't think that part through, but I would love if y'all join me on that and follow the social media for that page. I'm so sorry I couldn't be here last week for the last um, episode. My week was crazy. But all that aside, I am back. And of course, it is the finale of Insecure. I really don't even have that much. Um, just because even though the show was an hour, um, y'all been watching me, huh? Producers of Insecure, y'all been watching me? Yeah, just gonna go ahead and do the finale episode by character. The way I've been doing my reviews, by character, okay. Y'all ain't low, y'all been watching the kid. <laughs> Even though it was an hour, uh, it was separated per character. And so we got about 10 minutes per character and then we got that nugget of that conversation between Issa and Lawrence. Um, I usually do watch the episode twice and I didn't take notes while I was watching because when I was drunk, Influenced. I wasn't drunk. I was influenced and I didn't have time to watch it the second time the way I usually do All that being said, I did have some notes I'm going to talk about what I remember if I forget anything, please let me know in the comments Let's have a discussion in the comments. So let's get into it So really uh, the first shot we see is of Issa and she has on her niggas sweatshirt again the niggas the niggas sweatshirt that we've loved um, which was featured in the premiere episode of season two and so this just made me feel like we have come completely full circle if I sound nasally and stuffed up and gross it's because I am I'm fighting the cold right now which is knocking me out um, but bear with me um, and we've seen it we've seen her come full circle where she's excited about dating she's throwing herself out there she don't really know how to do it but she want her man back and she's wearing these niggas sweatshirt because she's starting to give up on the prospects and now She's facing it. She's alone. She's not the. De- she's not uh, deflecting anymore, uh, and she's moving forward. Issa and this niggas T. Ironically, this niggas T in what used to be a town for niggas is now being gentrified, and she's passing all these white people on the street. All of the hometown businesses are being shut down, shut out, bought out. Um, all these venues are now up for sale. Uh, quality of Rent is going up. Issa has to move. Um, no one can afford to own their businesses anymore. And the white neighbors are starting to move in. Gentrification at its finest. And it's no longer Inglewood. It's Islewood. I, I believe that's what they were calling it. It's Islewood. And I'm seeing... I'm li- I live in New York. Like, I'm seeing this firsthand. They're trying to rename Harlem Black Renaissance Harlem into Soha. Or whatever they were calling it. Um, they were trying to rename... A part of the Bronx the piano district and it's 
there's a song that's playing very specifically at this part of the show and it's saying find some time to do something and it just keeps repeating that phrase find the time to do something and it feels helpless i know there's plenty of black people that are out there trying to fight gentrification calling up their local representatives speaking to people in their governments or just being out in the communities at these town halls really trying to fight it but i mean the shit's happen and money talks and they have the power they have the access they have uh the friends in high places it's happening y'all and and the fact that Issa's um showing such homage to such a very black problem is so poignant and so so beautifully and well done and responsible in this series people on twitter talking about her rent only went up sixty dollars for the year so really her monthly is only going up five dollars she can't afford it don't don't be breaking down and doing math like that the point of the thing is she got the no. I don't even know how y'all seen the sixty dollars. I'm the nosy one. I be paying attention to all the details and stuff. I ain't seen no sixty dollar on the bill. Is that even a thing? Anyway, so that's that. Um, I'm gonna do Molly first, and this is really unusual because Molly, for me, it's such a personal character for me. I really attach myself to just the decisions that she makes, the way she, um, her intent behind her decisions are just trying to. Regarding herself as a smart, responsible, and mature adult while being flawed and fucked up. Like, while still making all these rash, weird, questionable decisions. But still regarding yourself as like, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm good. Like, I'm smart. I make these things. I do these things. But you be out there being trash, you know? So Molly and Quentin, who is played by Lorel, is a thing. And you know what? At first, she's saying about him, like, he's not really my type. She's being slow to show Issa the picture and show him what he looks like. But he kind of, like, moved himself in a little bit. And that happens. Like, I know physical attraction for me is, is number one on the board. Like, I want to be super attracted. But honestly, like, once I get to know someone and they become a friend and I really like their personality... They become attractive physically to me as well. And, like, I've gone after people who, at first, I was like, not really my type, which me, he ain't, he ain't that cute. If you're just going to be honest, it's really just me, he ain't that cute. So he wasn't that cute. But just his swag, his confidence, his demeanor, the way he handles Molly, the way he just looks out for her, like, there's, there's something so attractive in that. And so Molly was like, let me, let me hang out. Let me step outside of what I'm usually, how I'm usually moving. Let me do something different. And it turned out to be a real cute situation. LA is too small. LA is way too small. They Lawrence is trying to do this marathon. He spots Issa and Molly on the side. Um, Molly's just trying to take Quentin out real quick. She spot Lawrence and Aparna off in the corner. Like LA way too small. All just running into people and and mm -mm, I don't like that. <coughs> Thank God her therapist is back i wanted to see this black woman so bad because i was like i need i need a piece i need a piece like put molly with the therapist so i can get me a piece and she did not disappoint because molly is still holding her life in regard to what should happen and when your expectations do not meet your reality you find disappointment and sadness and that's just a recipe for disaster because maybe things ain't gonna go the way they are in your head so what, you're going to be sad all the time? We have to find a way to be happy in the changes of reality compared to how we expect things to go, how things should go. That's Molly's favorite word is should. So the therapist tells her, get out of should and get into could. Come on, word. Come on, word. So it's late night. Molly and Quentin up in the office talking real low. Lights dim. Late night work. Getting to know each other. And he pulls out some Hennessy. Now, I don't know what part of the world y'all at where you alone with a dude in a sexy little nighttime situation and a Henny bottle come out and y'all split platonically. I don't know in what universe that happens. So, of course, Molly gets a little freaky dicky. She put that Hennessy down and her and Quentin do the bang bang. I, I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. It was a curveball. Um, do I still identify with Molly here? The girls get together, they're watching Due North really quickly. Molly is wearing a Trayvon hoodie, which if you guys buy it from We Are Liberated Clothing Company, which Yvonne Orji, the, the actor who 
plays Molly on Insecure. She tweeted out, if you buy that hoodie, the proceeds go to the Trayvon Martin Foundation. So being entertained while being culturally and socially responsible, a win, 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 win. Um, and the, the hoodie just looks dope and it, and it helps uh, the Martin family and it just allows us to unite in unity and create awareness and never forget the name of Trayvon Martin. So that was magnificent. I can't believe... Everybody in the show was watching Due North, and I can't believe, as a surprise for us, the audience, we get to have Due North as well, and I can't wait to get into that towards the end. Well, Molly is still dealing with trying to decide whether or not to stay here with the white folks who deny her value and refuse to give her a promotion and a raise for all of her great hard work, um, versus going to where Quentin's at in Chicago and going to the black office. Now, in this episode, I feel like Natasha Rothwell, who plays Kelly, easily out one of our favorite characters um she really stuck with her lines here it felt like it felt like they didn't really give her a lot of space for improv um because we really had to like tie the story for the finale so i guess she had to stick to her character um but she she asked molly you stay with the white or the blacks which one because the blacks gonna be in your business they don't have no boundaries they're gonna get too comfortable the whites ain't gonna let you go to where you need to go professionally so money and auntie business or privacy and going nowhere like uh, what you want so molly gets into this uh meeting at the office with all these white men all of her her gatekeepers her bosses the people with access and power and they're it's still a no for me dog it's still a no you're not getting a raise you're not getting anything from us what we will give you is a certificate of completion y'all gave her a ged don't do that Molly gave so much value, so much time, so much effort into your company, and y'all gave her a GED certificate. She deserves more. She deserves more. And I think that was the moment where she realized this, this is not going anywhere. And good for her. Make a move. I'm wondering how it's going to be involved with the L.A. scene if she's in Chicago. I don't know. Um, but I, I completely trust the writers of this series, so I'm excited to see what happens with this. And they're gonna hang her photo up. Employee of the month? Y'all gave her employee of the month? Don't hang her photo up and no what? I can't. Last but not least, we see Molly. She's getting dolled up. She's getting sexified. She's doing all this stuff. And maybe you're thinking it's for Quentin that she already hooked up with in the office real quick. And he's single. He's available. Why not? absolutely no it's dro the good insatiable weak spot there is something that is so normal that happens to plenty of us where someone just has you just have a soft spot for that someone they're trash they're unavailable emotionally they're taken they're not good for you but somehow it's still this one person that you choose and that is the most real decision messy as fuck Messy, chaotic, dramatic, illogical. Everyone knows she shouldn't be with the, in this situation with Joe. We don't even know if he's really in an open marriage. She don't even know if the wife knows. Like, it's messy, but it's the decision that she makes. Do I identify myself with Molly right here? Yeah. Yes, I do. I do. All right, let's go to Lawrence, who looks fine in this episode. He fine. Huh? Huh? He's fine. Okay, Jay Ellis. I was really drunk when I wrote this note. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what I even meant. So Lawrence and a partner are discussing Woot Woot or discussing the failure of Woot Woot and what their next plan or next idea should be and she's shooting things with him and he's shooting things back with her. Um, but I'm really thinking that he and Issa should get together so they can have an app that battles gentrification. This made a lot of sense when I wrote it like late last night and the tequila was in my body. So if Lawrence is working on an app and Issa is doing We Got Y'all with the youths, and she's really disturbed by this gentrification. Somehow those two things have come together. And I'm thinking maybe for season three, they could come in as friends. Like, we've, we've had closure. We've, we've done, you know, we've healed our pains or whatever. So let's just get to know each other platonically. Um, 
and they may have they may could start off on that and then the love come back <laughs> what what that was for free the next one ain't okay so that would be that would be really cool that would be really dope men have this thing so we see that lawrence's jealousy is really starting to seep out and really starting to affect he and a part is a partner's relationship um a partner drunkenly repeatedly slept with another co-worker who it wasn't serious it wasn't a thing it was just a sexual fling so lawrence being in the office is watching them stand close together and giggle and laugh and he don't like that what is, what is this thing that y'all men have about y us women your girls laughing at another man's jokes that, is that cheating to y'all? Because y'all be out there cheating. Y'all be out there liking pics, sliding in DMs, sliding in vaginas. <laughs> but if we laugh at another man's jokes, y'all got a big problem. What is that? And it's like all y'all do it. Y'all see us laugh at something, y'all mad. I just want to say this episode made me love a partner. Love, 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 love. She has her standards. She has her clarity. She communicates. She into you. She's going to let you know. If you're wild, then she's going to let you know. If you're out there moving wrong, she's going to let you know. And when you're not aligned to her standard and what she wants for herself and her happiness, you have to go. Couldn't have asked for more in a character. Like, I... L that's... Okay, she, she a part of me as well. She a part of me. Once a nigga is on some bullshit, I gotta go. What are we doing here? We arguing about BS. How are we going to buy a mortgage? You mad because I'm laughing at a co-worker's jokes. But your ex-girl's calling. I'm supposed to be chill. But I can't laugh at a joke of some dude I used to sleep with. Drunk. Niggas. Like niggas. All the time. All the time. So Lawrence, he's, he's trying to keep it cool, but he keeps mentioning the fact that, yo, you laughing at Colin's jokes. He ain't even that funny. Oh, why are you still laughing? And she's like, okay. Because this even isn't even about Colin. So you're projecting. You're jealous. It's bothering me. And Lawrence, he didn't have time to really clean out the trash of his last relationship. He never dealt with it. He never had closure. He never faced his feelings. He just saw the next hot thing and got with it. And he's bringing all that baggage into the new relationship. So him being so stained and still hurt and fearful... Everything that a partner is doing is triggering him and reminding him that you're about to get hurt here. You're about to get hurt here. Let me defend myself because I got cheated on already. That hurt. I was out there looking stupid. I feel like a fool. Never again. It's not going to happen this time. So what you doing? Who's that? Now, now you think you're checking on it. And you, you think you're one step ahead of the game. But really, you're out here looking stupid. You're making yourself look stupid in the words of a partner. It's not even no problem here, Dougie. Like, you're making one out of nothing because you're bringing your garbage from your past into your present. And we can't move like that. We can't We can't have build a future like that. So a part of peace on that ass. Oh, she is... She's amazing. And you, and you just see it. Lawrence needs to be alone. He needs to figure out how to get that pain out. He needs to have self-closure. He needs to have closure with Issa. He can't move forward healthily while he's, while he's still broken from what had happened. It's, it's not going to work. And it's not a healthy foundation to build on. Let's go to Issa and then we can talk about the conversation. <sighs> Issa is so funny. Every scene starts with this marathon. Um, Kelly is supposed to be in this marathon and Molly and Tiffany who's pregnant. How much time passed, like, how much time passed where now she has a baby bump and... Was she drinking at Derek's party? Wasn't she? Because they had cocktails, right? Or was she just introducing the cocktails and maybe it was a little Easter egg that she actually wasn't drinking because she would have had to have been pregnant there without making the announcement. And now she has a baby bump and is expecting... Huh? But it was hilarious for the fact that Kelly quit the marathon that she'd been training months for because she had her period. What a simple ass excuse. What a simple reason to quit something you've worked so hard for, 
But I understand it. I'm so happy that black women are freely talking about their periods the way we actually talk to each other about periods. Like, it was heavy. It was messy. It came out of nowhere. It ruined my underwear. I could. I had to be carried. This this girl had to be carried to the finish line because she had a period. Help. Help. Like, <laughs> she's so dramatic. So dramatic. Issa's workplace. Uh, she's still getting yelled at about this Miss Principal Gaines thing. Wild ain't doing shit ever sitting on the sidelines. Frida got promoted. Let me tell you something. Issa has been hands-on. Issa finds the schools. Issa fights for the programs to get implemented. Issa comes up with the ideas to make them happen. Issa fixes the problems when the program's about to fail. Issa makes connections. Issa reaches out to the kids. Issa is wholeheartedly and emotionally invested. Issa hit a roadblock and didn't know what to do and didn't handle it. And everyone's yelling at her and Frida gets promoted. Well, she gets to sit on the sidelines and complain about how Issa's not doing this part, though. So Frida sits on the side and gets complaining about how Issa's not doing something. But Issa's not even considered to be promoted. How did Frida get promoted off what? Doing what? Doing what ideas does she bring? What does she do? What does she move forward? What does she fix and heal and, and solve? How is Frida getting promoted? Is this a thing that's supposed to point out the racism in the office? Because if it is, I'm on board. Sign me up. Where is the list? So Issa's in the process of moving. She tells her friends, I gotta get out the apartment. Uh, gentrification is happening, rent's going up. She can't afford to live there anymore. Uh, and she has to move kind of far away from where she was because you gotta live on the outskirts now. Inglewood is now turning to Iowood. And it's, um, it's just, it's just fucking happening. So in closing the apartment, I believe she lies to her brother. You know, she tells him, I gotta see the landlord. I gotta give back the keys. It'll take like 10 minutes. Um, but she's on the phone, obviously texting, um, and she goes in and it's as a surprise to us, Lawrence is still in the house. And her first thing was, whoa, like, did you wait for me? So I believe we were supposed to believe that it was a surprise to Issa, but I think she knew, right? She knew going into the house that Lawrence would be there. Like she's going into have this conversation with him right now. Raise your hand if you cried. Yo, and when my tequila was flowing and my rosé champagne was just, the bubbles were still hitting my brain, I was like, I was really tearing, my eyes was wet because um, the air was really dry, so my eyes was like getting more wet than they usually are, they were just trying to self-moisturize, trying to self-heal. Fuck it, I was tearing up, I was tearing up, y'all got me, y'all really got me because I was about to break down at this conversation. What fucking closure. So no matter what relationship that I have, parents, friends, romantic interests, I always strive for closure because I need to be heard, to be understood. Um, but I also want to hear, I, also, I always believe that there's a healing. There's something that's getting lost in the sauce. We're not communicating. I don't understand your side. You don't understand my side. You don't understand how you hurt me. I don't understand how I hurt you. And we're arguing because we're just trying to be right to each other without actually having listened. How can we come together in this space to be like, I hear you. I see you. I take accountability for my actions that hurt you. I apologize. Um, and how can we come to a positive place now? Even if that means that we don't move forward together, that closure conversation for me personally is always so important. And I'm so happy that we got to see a black man be hurt, be vulnerable, be honest with his feelings. Like just to be able to see that lets the millions of black men watching know that it's okay to connect emotionally with a woman. You're not a loser, you're not weak, you're not gay, you're not any of these things that these hyper-masculine Fools want to project onto you black men like you are allowed to speak your feelings and have those feelings and and say sorry and take accountability and even if you thought you were right somehow something's got to smack you in your face and say you wasn't right this whole time you was wrong for this part y'all both could be wrong in some areas and y'all both could be right in some areas what part are you going to take accountability for and when I got to see these two beautiful black people connect 
in pain. Let these, these, these pains go. Let these defenses go. They've been walking around projecting and denying and deflecting and, 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 and working from a source of pain where all that shallow sex, those loose partners, those mistakes in burgeoning relationships, all of it was a mess because all they've been doing all season was operating from a place of pain and defense. And you're not allowing yourself to freely love and be open to giving love and to receiving love pain and love don't mix that's oil and water it, it doesn't make sense and so it takes time it takes conversations it makes it takes mishaps it takes getting your ass humbled getting your ass stranded getting your ass played for you to be like what am I doing that I'm moving out here like this what what am I doing oh so important so powerful so good so wholesome i really love that conversation um lauren takes accountability for his an action to rise to the challenge of being the adequate partner that Issa was requiring requiring of him what <laughs> what a nigga admitted he wasn't shit you admitted you wasn't shit damn damn i you needed a man to be this and i failed you wow 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 what <laughs> and that's and that's him failing to be the partner in love that she needed and that was failing to be a partner in the financial situation that she needed she can't she supported him financially the home, the bills, the whoop whoop dreams. She supported everything and he was just this sunken vessel for her. He wasn't giving to her. Um, and that's and, and, and that's poison for her. Um, she took accountability for obviously for cheating. Like even if you were depressed, even if you were in this bad space, even if you weren't what I needed, cheating would have never been the answer and you are still a good person you never deserved that. Um, and not providing support that he needed knowing that she had a depressed boyfriend. <sighs> I don't know what it's like to date or try to love a depressed person. I have usually been the depressed person in need of love. And so many people have failed me because we're all human. We don't know how to give to someone like that a lot of us have never met a depressed person before and then all of a sudden somebody that you love someone that you're really close to someone that you rely on is depressed has has a mental health issue that is failing them to be themselves to be available for you as a person and then you sort of have to face that deal with that fix that like it's this whole thing and so instead of Issa knowing how to move about loving a depressed person giving a depressed person the support that they need she retracted and shut down like i can't give you the something that's being a void in your heart the something that's being a void in your spirit i don't know how to fill that for you and i don't know what you require of me so to make it easier and for my defenses and my own sanity i'm backing out and so you have a depressed person who can't give and love their partner the way that they need and you have a depressed person not being supported and loved in the way that they need because there's this gap of emotion happening which causes a strain and a separation and the fact that they can face each other and say I love you and I failed you in these ways and I'm sorry <sighs> wow <laughs> wow <sighs> and so right here I was like this is it get together <laughs> like I'm still there I'm still very like you want to work on it can y'all work on it and Lawrence says bye <laughs> it's still a no <sighs> Lawrence is it still a no I don't understand like why you guys are separated at this point y'all can get over this right can't we all just get along can we all just get back to the love? They don't want to get together. They don't want to get together. Lawrence is at the door in that sexy cream sweater, making his chest pop out. You over there crying, being sensitive with that faded cut and the hair at the top that I like, and you just, you buy. 
and Issa looks right into, and then he drops on his knees, and he proposes, and Issa says yes, and I'm like, no, 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 and Issa looks right into the camera, so you know she's making all this shit up, and I like that cue. I really like that cue, like, this is the finale episode, no more surprises, no more knee jerk, no more lying to the audience. Issa, looking at the camera, invites us as an audience into her fantasy world with her. Come with me. I want you guys to know this is fake. I want you guys to know this is what I want in this moment that I can't vocalize, but I want you guys to be here in this emotion with me. And wow, she gets proposed to by Lawrence. They get married on a bouch, they sit on a bouch with their wedding attire. She comes back pregnant, he kisses the belly. She looks into the camera again, like, y'all still with me? We're still dreaming, we're still dreaming together. They come into the house with the baby and they have a family. <coughs> and I mean, this is the age. This is the age where we are considering family and, and, and connecting with someone romantically, fo fo ever, and making somebody a husband and doing all that. And we see what she wants. She wants Lauren. She wants her man back. She wants the family, the future. It's him. But for him, it's by Issa. So, still nothing. Um, and we see Issa, she moves in with Daniel. She's been vague about where she going, where she live now, what's happening. She's staying with Daniel. So once again, I pose the question, what does Daniel want what does he want? Why does does he have a soft spot for Issa? Is he just this super human, big hearted, the most mature person in the show where he keeps forgiving because he can acknowledge the flaws of humanity? Why does he keep letting this girl back in? She's crazy. She's really crazy and she's really toxic. Why does Daniel keep letting her back in? And in even closer and more intimate space now. I don't get it. So we see Lawrence leave, he loses a partner. We see Issa move in with Daniel, so she, so she loves and wants Lawrence. And we see Molly choose Dro. Like, we're all still messy, we're all still figuring out, we're all still making very questionable decisions because that's just what the fuck upper 20s and lower 30s do. God, go ahead, Insecure. I'm happy. I'm so happy. Um, do North. So... We don't get, obviously, like, full episodes of Do North, but we get, like, little clips, um, and we're sort of watching, uh, episodes of Do North, but we're seeing clips per episode. Um, so just one of my favorite quotables, the slave master says, you may be three-fifths of a person, <laughs> but you're a whole, like, what? <laughs> I love it when you go do sound. And my all-time favorite, Sojourner, Truth. Y'all are so corny for that. Y'all are so corny, and that made me laugh so hard. That slave show is so funny. I hate slavery. Yeah. <laughs> you and every other black slave. Like, <laughs> yep. Issa Ray, so proud of you. I loved meeting Yvonne Orji as an actress and entertainer well written well produced amazing 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 um and it's so funny because i sort of had something a running gag like that in my comedy web series sit black and relax where my lead character maya she watches the news and the news program always has something racist and ridiculous always um so this this series has just inspired me to get to work light a fire under my ass get things happening get things popping um so my series is coming as well, and I hope you guys support me as well. I'm a black creative, film, filmmaker, writer, director, producer, me, Jess Natasha, content creator, all of that, all of that. And I will keep making videos right here on this channel. Please subscribe, like this video, comment, share, do all the good stuff, and I'll see you guys next time.